Hey, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in and I guess Happy New Year. Hope you're having a great start to your 2021. In 2020, along with starting this YouTube channel, I started a podcast with a friend. On the podcast, we talk about recent tech headlines that caught our attention. I've decided to try something out where I take a clip from a recent podcast and put some video to it so you guys can see what we're talking about on the different topics. If you like weekly tech updates, you can check us out on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us under We Need to Talk About Tech. I'll post links down below on where you can find us. I hope you enjoy the clip from the podcast, and I'll see you at the end of it. Also, please like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton. We're almost at 40 subscribers. Welcome to We Need to Talk About Tech, tech. Uh, where we talk about the past, present, and future of technology. On this week's episode, we talk about our favorite things from CES 2021. We're talking about the Samsung Unpacked event. And recent rumors about Apple's upcoming products. Starting off with topic number one, uh, CES this year was all digital, like we mentioned in the last podcast. Uh, it went on from January 11th to the 13th, right? I think last week I'd said it went to the 14th, but it actually went to the 13th. There was a lot of exciting technology that was, you know, shown off. That was kind of teased for the future. And surprisingly, a lot of stuff that was actually coming out in 2021, a lot of times, you know, CES kind of shows what's coming in the future. Not what's coming out this year. It's, oh, it's happening, you know, two years, five years from now. But at least a lot of the stuff that I saw that I was excited about was stuff that was actually happening this year. Now, I guess, do you have any favorite technology that you want to talk about from CES this year? Yeah, so there was a, a few things that came up this year that uh, was kind of exciting. I made a, a small list. Um, things that we not necessarily, I'll give like a brief, um, explanation of them. And if there's anything there or other stuff that you want to talk about, let me know. Um, but yeah, I do agree with you. A lot of the stuff that, that was shown off at this year's CES was a little bit more practical and, and closer to public, like, like, uh, being able to be used by the public in the near future. Um, so uh, a couple things that I thought were really cool was uh, Intel is making some new processors that have a little big kind of architecture to them, which is similar to how ARM works, where you can have a group of cores that are very powerful, your very high power cores, and another cluster of cores that are um, less powerful for more like streamlined tasks. Like if the system is asleep or not being used heavily, it can use those cores uh, to save on battery life and stuff like that, um, which is very unlike x86 processors. Usually x86 processors have a bunch of cores that are completely equal. Um, so that was cool. Um, another cool thing was the TCL Next paper, which was essentially almost like an e-ink, a color e-ink display, but a new kind of technology around that where it's uh, a paper that, uh, or a, a display that doesn't have any backlight. Um, and instead just reflects light like um, e-paper um, and that's going to be coming out in april for around 339 349 euros um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens there um, and the last two things i thought were really ex exciting was um, in samsung ces conference they talked about upcycling samsung's upcycling program where they could take older samsung galaxy phones and repurpose them um, with a software update for something for another use so that they don't end up in landfills um, One of the examples they gave was using a Samsung phone as a baby monitor um, Which is really cool. And the last thing which I thought was the best thing of CES Was GM's kind of rebranding they changed their logo and they showed off their their future of electric vehicles and their electric future called GM Alt Altium weird name GM Altium and yeah, it's a weird name. um and their their bright drop program which is going to be them kind of electrifying the delivery industry and then the like work truck industry um which i also thought was really interesting uh how about you a lot of cool stuff like you said um yeah 
Intel showed off new processors. AMD showed off a new processor. NVIDIA did. One interesting thing is there was a few rollable screens that were kind of teased. Like LG had, I guess at the start of their keynote, they had someone holding a rollable screen and it kind of rolling up to the top. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that they're going to have this coming out 2021. Now, whether that turns out to be true or if it's just kind of hopeful optimism, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, last year was a big year for foldable phones. It would be pretty cool to see 2021 be the year for rollable phones. Yeah. Also, something pretty cool that I kind of, uh, I don't know if I was the first one that showed this to you, but Razer's Project Hazel Mask. Yeah. Um, so Razer, the game and accessory company, they make, you know, keyboards and mice with RGB lights and all kinds of cool glowing effects to them. So they're working on a new mask that is like a clear see-through face shield and it has lights on the side that light up, obviously any color you want them to. Um, it has a microphone on the inside also so that if your voice is muffled, it will, when your voice is muffled, it will project the sound outside so people can hear you clearly. Also, when it's darker out, the lights turn on so people can actually see your mouth moving too. Is this the most groundbreaking thing at CES? Definitely not, but I thought it was pretty cool to see. And it's like one step closer to everyone just walking around dressed like a Sith, just <laughs> like regular life. Um, Another cool thing that I really liked was the Asus ROG Flow X13. Now, it's a long name. Asus uh, showed off a lot of laptops, all featuring, well, not all, but mostly featuring the new AMD Ryzen 5000 CPUs. What was so cool about this one, the ROG Flow X13? So it's a touchscreen laptop. It flips around to be a two-in-one so you can fold it the screen over backwards so that's a tablet mode it also has a proprietary link so that you can hook up an external gpu to it so it has an integrated gpu into the system which is you know you can play pretty good games on it but they made it so that you have a 3080 that plugs directly into it so you could have desktop level gaming on a laptop with this external GPU plugged in. Also, it has all kinds of ports, like four HDMI ports. It has, I think, a display port, HDMI, and power. So it, it's, it seems like it's very convenient to turn your laptop into, okay, I gotta work on the go, I gotta do this you know, mobile working, and then once I come home, I have a full desktop setup. Just plug this one cable in, and your entire desk is set up at home. I thought that was something pretty cool to see. Once again, not the most useful, not the most practical thing right now, but in terms of making more things like this in the future, I'd love to see it, right? Um, and then once again, GM and their electrified feature. We talked, obviously, at the start of this year about electric cars coming to the future and how great it would be if okay gm brought this charging technology that they were initially debuting with the hummer and they were bringing that to other vehicles and that's kind of what we saw right they showed off so many cars from cadillac from buick from ford and it's it seems like they're really doubling down on this electric future yeah yeah and i with the GM Ultium thing, I didn't expect them to be the first traditional car manufacturer to make that big leap. Um, and they, you know, in their presentation, not only did, did they make this claim that they, you know, they're really going uh, very serious into an electric future for their vehicles, but they changed their logo. Like they changed their whole branding around the company um, to kind of signify the fact that they really want to go electric. And they put a lot of really big claims um on you know their electric future which which really surprised me i would have expected to see something like that from a ford or you know a kia uh, or a hyundai 
than than GM because GM has, has been very successful in th the traditional you know gas market um, you know most of my family worked at GM for for at one point or another and they're very much into that gas powered you know legacy that GM has so you know there I would imagine that they're probably they're probably raising an eyebrow for a lot of people who are dark diehard GM fans um, with this kind of very aggressive uh, stance towards electric but I think it's great I think the stuff that they showed was the most futuristic things that I've, I've really ever seen in reality I think after I, I saw a little bit of their conference I, I said to you this CES felt like the future was now with their like mm -hmm. um, VTOL vertical takeoff and landing um, kind of car <laughs> yeah. vehicles and their uh, you know their their buses that that will work autonomously and, and take you to where you need to go and stuff like that it was just really cool to see all this kind of technology of how they were thinking of it it was pretty cool to see that and i guess the thing that's making that all possible is this new ultium platform right from my understanding it's kind of it's the bed of an a car all filled with batteries and motors on the front and on the back and what that kind of allows them to do is they can pretty much stick any frame they want on top of that, right? So it's very interchangeable, I guess, in terms of, you know, you want an SUV, we can stick it on top of this frame, or we can stick it on top of this base. If you want a sedan, we can put it on top of this. If you want a coupe, we can put it on top of this. What this Altium car platform does is it makes the manufacturing process, I guess, that much easier for them. Yeah, and and it's completely modular as well. So they talked about, hey, if you wanted, uh, you know, their biggest battery with a rear wheel drive motor, you could do that. If you wanted their smallest battery with a four wheel drive motor, they could do that. So it, it's pretty much they could just decide what configuration they want for what car, um, which is really cool. It just makes you wonder. And GM has all these different brands with all these different um, configurations from from. Why am I forgetting <laughs> the brand now? Uh, Buick, from Buick to Chevrolet to GM not proper. Ford. I think I mentioned Ford before, but yeah, not Ford. Not Ford, but like GM proper <laughs> or something like that. But even then, like, it's just cool to see and to think of where they're going to take this. And the, the one brand that they did show um, was Cadillac. It seems like that's going to be their, their flagship for their, their electric future. It's going to be Cadillac. Um, where they're, this tech, I think, is looks like it's going to debut first and then, you know, in a more luxury kind of style and then it's going to trickle down to the Chevrolet Volts and, and it seems like their plan is to have an all-electric lineup across all their companies not too far in the future, which I think it, it's going to be a wait-and-see kind of thing to see if they're actually going to go through with it. But um, from what I'm seeing from them, it looks like they're taking this really seriously. Yeah. And, you know, wait and see, right? They are, like you said, successful at making gas-powered cars. We don't expect them to, okay, start in 2021, no more gas-powered cars, everything's electric. It's going to be something that they slowly move towards as the market moves towards it. Yeah. But I guess just the fact that they're, they're showing off something like this and, like you said, rebranding, you know, changing their logo, I think it's a good sign for the future. Now, unrelated to the GM EV showcase, did you see Mercedes showcase? No. Did you see the car that they showed off? No, I didn't. Um, let me pull up. So I can't remember what the car is called, but the main thing I wanted to talk about was, was the dashboard. Um, it's a new dashboard, which is the entire thing is one big screen. It's, real, it's three screens that are joined together behind one panel of glass. But imagine, you know, from the driver's dash to the middle media unit to a dashboard on the passenger side, all one continuous screen. And when I saw it, I thought this looks like something out of Star Trek. It looks like a control panel from Star Trek. Yeah, I think I, I got it here. So I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just all screen. It's it's pretty cool. Like it's it's essentially they took 
they took like your traditional dash where you would have maybe some wood or something like that and instead of just having wasted space they replaced it with screen from the driver's end where you would normally show your speed and all that stuff and your mileage to the infotainment screen in the center all the way to the passenger side um yeah. where there would just normally be a blank dash there's a screen there which it's interesting because we've seen something like this from the germans recently with the porsche Taycan, where there was an option where you could get a screen on the the passenger side but this is even more uh even more forward thinking than that because like you said it looks like a star trek panel it looks like something that you would put your fingers on to like make your car move forward or something like that it's really cool and i guess the cool thing about having the passenger side with their own screen too is traditionally your passenger is sort of like your co-pilot right they're the ones kind of helping you navigate and helping you do stuff and the fact that they have their own screen that they can interact with the navigation system with just makes so much more sense, right? If instead of having to, okay, reach over in some car navigation systems, they won't let you put in an address unless you're completely stopped. Yeah. You have to be not even stopped at a light. Like you have to be stopped, put your car into park. Now you can enter an address in. But if you have someone who's driving beside you with their own screen and their own inputs and they could put in the address they can put in the destination oh i feel like you know i feel like stopping for something to eat find somewhere with a drive through they can do all that while you're still driving it just makes so much more sense yeah i completely agree and i think that just goes to show like this ces like you you said in originally like as futuristic as that that hyper screen from mercedes-benz looks it looks practical it looks like something that could be put in a car today and would work and i think that's the coolest part about this year's ces um, and why i think it was kind of a big success despite the fact that it was all you know online and, and you know not in a trade center like it traditionally is it's that it felt like this was a ces where there wasn't a lot of vaporware which is essentially just a bunch of stuff that companies want to show off, but you'll never actually use um, in a practical sense um, or even want to use in a practical sense. This CES, a lot of it was just stuff that you can see being you know, put into practice very soon on the horizon, but also that you want to use, um, which is pretty cool. I mean, there were some, some, a few things that I was wondering why anyone would want that, like Samsung's Bot Handy which was this little <laughs> robot that rolls around with one hand that can pour a glass of wine for you and set the table. Um, yeah. Which, you know, might seem cool, but during that whole presentation, I was just thinking, well, that would take so long that I would imagine it would probably just be easier to do it myself. But that being said, this CES, that was few and far between. I think a lot of the stuff that we saw was really cool. Um, including, you know, it's funny, you mentioned the razor mask. Originally, when when you showed that to me, because you were the first person to show it to me, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just had, but, you know, as you mentioned it there, I think that's actually really smart. A microphone, so many people have talked about wearing a mask. It's hard to communicate because everything sounds mu muffled. The idea of having a microphone that could amplify your voice. And originally, I thought the lights were really stupid. But now I'm thinking, how cool would it be if those lights lit up when you were speaking? So that someone knew, oh, this person's trying to speak. There's a visual indication that that person's speaking to me. Um, and and another thing too, like just communicating with someone. Mm -hmm. Some of a lot of it is okay. Your sound is getting muffled, but I guess there's so many non-verbal communication cues that come from seeing someone speak. True. And just the fact that like, even if you could hear someone perfectly, a mask covering their face prevents preventing you from seeing them makes it so much harder to communicate not even to think of the fact of okay let's say if someone is deaf or like it's hard of hearing and their main mode of of figuring out what you're saying is actually reading your lips yeah most of the masks that people wear are you know a complete covering it's opaque you can't see what someone's mouth is doing so even if you're thinking okay just from an accessibility standpoint having a clear mask that will light up if you're speaking or if it's dark out it it makes so much more sense yeah yeah 100 percent. and that's the thing like with this razor version of the mask if anyone hasn't seen it it essentially has like a, a translucent almost nearly transparent layer over your face 
um, but it's slightly tinted. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you. I think this, the one thing is, I think a lot of the apprehension for me came from the fact that it was coming from Razer. Razer has a tendency to make things very flashy and with RGB and very expensive. Um, but if there is a future where wearing, where mask wearing becomes just a part of, of culture and, and, you know, like it is for a lot of countries already, but I could see something like this of making it cooler and, and making it more interesting and, you know, making it a little bit more flashy would be really cool. And yeah, 100%, just seeing a visual representation, not just from the LEDs, but also being able to see the person's face through the mask um, would greatly help communication in, in an era where people are wearing masks. Uh, the Mercedes-Benz that will be debuting this screen is called the EQS electric sedan. It's supposed to be coming out late 2021. And the screen, not called the Hyperscape, I think that's a game. I don't know, I got, got Hyperscape from somewhere. It's called the Hyper Screen, and it's 56 inches wide. It stretches all the way across inches. from one window to the next window. That is nuts. It's a TV screen in your car. <laughs> Basically, oh, they actually did show someone watching TV on the passenger side, and there's some sort of modded turn system in play where if the driver tries to like look or turn their head to see what's on the screen it will actually stop showing whatever's on the tv screen so you and this depends on what region you're in you know different countries different you know, provinces different states have different rules on i guess media playing while someone's driving to avoid distracted driving but Yes, you could watch TV on it. Okay, our second topic of the day is... The hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like this episode clip and you want weekly tech news, you can check out the podcast at the links below. I'll post updates on when we release episodes on my Twitter. You can also check that out down below. And once again, please like and subscribe. Until next time, take it easy. Peace.